this edition of Manned Space, we fly with the astronauts of Apollo 15 to the moon's Apennine Mountains and look at a collectible that was their insurance if they couldn't get home. On May 11, 1971, a 363-foot-tall Apollo Saturn V rocket left the Vehicle Assembly Building for the three-and-a-half-mile trip to Launch Complex 39A. On hand for the rollout was the crew of Apollo 15. The only all-Air Force crew of the Apollo program, Apollo 15 was commanded by Colonel David Scott. Already a veteran of two space flights, this would be Scott's third trip to space and his second aboard a Saturn V. Joining Scott for his first trip to space was command module pilot Al Warden, who was among the fifth group of 19 astronauts selected by NASA in April of 1966. Rounding out the crew serving as lunar module pilot was Jim Irwin, who was also selected to the astronaut corps in April 1966. Like Warden, Apollo 15 was to be Irwin's first trip to space. Scheduled to launch on July 26, 1971, the crew of Apollo 15 was destined to land a few days later near a large and majestic mountain range called the Apennine Mountains. The most northerly landing site of the Apollo program, it promised to be rich in lunar science. It was to provide NASA astronauts their first opportunity to collect rocks from lunar mountains. As Commander Scott observed, Apollo 15 was to be the most singular, significant scientific expedition ever conducted. Apollo 15 was also the first mission of the Apollo program to carry on board a lunar roving vehicle. The LRV was an electric vehicle designed to operate in the low-gravity vacuum of the moon. It was capable of traversing the lunar surface, thus giving the astronauts the ability to extend the range of their lunar surface activities. With their training complete and with men and machines ready to go, the crew of Apollo 15 suited up for launch. They loaded up into a transfer van that would take them to the Launch Complex 39A and an elevator ride to the top of the Saturn V where they would board their Apollo spacecraft. Then, just after 9.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on July 26, 1971, the five giant F-1 engines at the bottom of the Saturn V roared to life and lifted the crew of Apollo 15 skyward. Three days after launch, the astronauts of Apollo 15 entered lunar orbit. Soon, Commander Scott and Lunar Module Pilot Irwin would float through a tunnel adjoining their command module to the Lunar Module and boarded the Lunar Module they named Falcon. Command Module Pilot Warden would remain on board the Command Module, which was designated Endeavor for the remainder of the mission. Scott and Irwin piloted Falcon toward the moon, and exactly 104 hours, 42 minutes, and 29 seconds after lifting off from Cape Kennedy, the pair touched down on the lunar surface. Once on the moon, Scott and Irwin participated in three moonwalks over three days, completing a then record of 18 hours and 37 minutes of exploration. The LRV carried them over 17 miles, and the pair collected more than 170 pounds of lunar samples, including one dubbed Genesis Rock, a piece of the moon's crust that was over 4 billion years old. The crew also set up the Apollo Lunar Surface Experiments Package, or ALSEP, a collection of geophysical instruments designed to monitor the environment of the Apollo 15 landing site long after Scott and Irwin had departed. Additionally, the crew also was successful in obtaining a core sample of the moon from about 10 feet beneath its surface. Before stepping off the moon for the last time, Scott had one final demonstration for viewers on live TV. Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. 
And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? Uh, Mr. Galileo was correct in his findings. On August 2nd, the crew of Falcon fired its ascent stage engine and lifted off the moon for a rendezvous with the command module Endeavour. The two vehicles were reunited and docked as Endeavour began its 50th orbit around the moon. On August 4th, during Apollo 15's 75th revolution of the moon, Endeavour's engine ignited and set a course back toward home. On the way, Al Warden became the first human to perform a deep space extravehicular activity. Warden left the spacecraft to retrieve film located in a camera outside the vehicle. To this day, it is still the farthest EVA ever performed. Then, on August 7th at 4.46 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, the crew of Apollo 15, despite the failure of one of its three main parachutes, safely splashed down in the Pacific Ocean, just over six miles from the designated landing area. Scott, Warden, and Irwin were picked up by helicopter and taken to the safety of the USS Okinawa, thus ending the epic journey of Apollo 15. The collectible we look at today belonged to one of the Apollo 15 astronauts and was held as insurance in the event the crew did not return home safely after the mission. We're looking at the face of an envelope emblazoned with the Apollo 15 mission insignia. Above the insignia are printed the words NASA Manned Spacecraft Center Stamp Club. Below the insignia it reads official commemorative cover. Also, each member of the crew has signed the envelope. The envelope is postmarked from Kennedy Space Center, dated on the morning of July 26, 1971, Apollo 15's launch date. Finally, note the stamp that commemorates the Antarctic Treaty. The envelope is accompanied by a Certificate of Authenticity dated May 15, 2013, and signed by Alfred M. Warden, Apollo 15 Command Module Pilot. In the Certificate of Authenticity, Warden certifies that the commemorative postal cover included with the letter was an Apollo 15 insurance cover. Warden declares that the insurance cover had been in his possession since the flight in 1971. The certificate goes on to explain that insurance covers were provided to select spaceflight crews by the Stamp Club at the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston. It tells us that the purpose of these covers was to provide for the crew families in the event their crew did not return from their flight. There was no other insurance available to the crews because of the risk of flights to the moon. On the back of the envelope, Warden has put the number 270 and signed it from my personal collection, Al Warden, Apollo 15, CMP. Beginning with Apollo 11, all of the Apollo missions had insurance covers except for Apollo 17. Most of the missions had more than one variety of covers, however, Apollo 15 had only one. In order to be considered a genuine Apollo 15 cover, it must be printed, signed, postmarked, and stamped exactly the way it is as shown here. Do you collect space artifacts? Maybe you have an insurance cover from another Apollo mission. If so, please tell us about it in the comments section. Thanks for watching Man Space. Please watch for upcoming videos at least twice a week, during which I'll discuss the history of the space program by highlighting artifacts and memorabilia from my extensive space collection. Also, please like, subscribe, and click the notification button for more great content about manned space.